How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. And on this video, I'll be taking you through my team selection for the upcoming game week 3. So the third game week of the season is closely approaching us. And in this video, I'll be going through my transfer plan as well as a quick review of how game week 2 went. Now as always, make sure that you guys in the deadline stream one hour before the deadline to get my final team selection. But I'll give you guys the update in this video as I've already made one transfer. So that's something you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. Now as mentioned, a quick review of game week 2 will be taking place currently. I won't be going over player by player, I'll give you guys the overall perspective. As on Monday I released my transfer plan where I went in depth. So go check that video out if you guys want to. But all you guys need to know is I scored 72 points in game week 2. Now unfortunately 72 points might sound a lot, but the fact of the matter, this is quite a high scoring game week. And therefore 72 is actually pretty average. But let me know how you guys did in game week 2, was it a better score than myself? Probably, especially if you triple captain Erling Haaland. Now as mentioned, no overall rank at the current moment till game week 10, as the ranks are super volatile at the moment and therefore it doesn't really matter that much. Now keep in mind we do have 2 free transfers and 0.0, .0 in the bank, but as mentioned I already made 1 transfer. So going over where those 72 points came from, first off on the bench, Bentley with 0 points, Winks with 2, Howard Bellis with 2, and finally Ben Johnson with 3, an assist against Man City. So quite unexpected there, was quite happy that he wiped out the Man City clean sheet, as I don't own Guardio or Rico Lewis in my defensive line. Now a bit of a strange rumour at the moment, David Bentley is apparently being targeted by Arsenal for a potential signing, so that'll be an absolute disaster as that will complete our Arsenal triple up. So one to monitor in the upcoming days as the transfer window does close, wouldn't have expected that to be honest. Now with Bentley on the bench, we've got Henderson between the sticks, quite disappointed with him and worried about the future, he only racked up one point in game week 2. Now if you guys have seen the transfer rumours, potentially Gay leaving the club, would leave that backline absolutely depleted, not a good sign for your set and forget goalkeeper. So unfortunately only one point in a fixture, I was hoping that he would do better, seems like a mistake going from between the sticks. Now at least our back three all got clean sheets, we have Trent Gabriel and Pedro Porro all on six points, no attacking returns, but one yellow card and one bonus for Gabriel. It's a little bit unusual here, usually we're kind of targeting the attacking returns, but it was all defensive ones, but can't complain with all returns. Then our midfield apartment, Saka and Jota once again scoring points, it seems like this was the game week of the six pointer, both of them getting an assist. Now big talking points about Eze potentially being transferred out by a lot of people, had a good performance but it's not resulting in FPL points at the moment. Then the even bigger talking point was going to be about Nkunku didn't start this Chelsea game and only came off the bench after they'd scored six goals, with almost every Chelsea attacker getting FPL points. So if you guys watch my transfer plan, you'll know you've probably done this in your own team in Kunku has already been transferred out, and I think he might drop in price once again. Now up front, the talking points continue to flow, should I have triple captain early Haaland? Definitely. Getting 17 points on your triple captain is absolutely insane, so congrats if you guys went there. Let's see if he or another option can get close to that 17 point mark, which is quite unlikely even with a double game week. But still managed to captain him for 34 points, almost half of our game week score. Then the final two options, quite disappointing, Isaac finally had 11 men compared to game week 1 but still couldn't perform, I'm slightly worried about Newcastle at the moment. Even more disappointing though was my kind of differential, Munez from Fulham, his rival Smith Rowe came out with the 10 pointer and at a cheaper price point, that was a little bit hard to take. So let's just hope in the future game weeks he does repay this patience, but I wasn't expecting him to blank against Leicester. So overall, actually a pretty disappointing week. I know that only Haaland scored a mass amount of points, but the fact that so many people triple captain him takes away from the captaincy, and our differentials didn't end up performing. But how did your game week go? Was it a better week than myself on 72 points? I've seen some massive 100 point clubs, but also some pretty low scores. Always like to keep track of how you guys are performing throughout the season, and all of you guys have different strategies to myself. Now going over our transfer plan, and as mentioned I already made one confirmed move that was in Kunku out for Rogers, and I did this on Sunday evening. So quite an uncharacteristic early move from myself, I usually like to hold out for information. But within Kunku's price drop and Percy, I don't think he's going to get back into that starting 11. I mean the team without him scored 6 goals. Now the option I went for was Rogers, and I explained this in the ultimate guide yesterday, I wanted a slice of that Aston Villa attack, 
before Leicester, Everton, Wolves and finally Ipswich. At his cheaper price point than a Leon Bailey offers me some flexibility as I look to potentially bring in Mo Salah next game week. Now in the ultimate guide yesterday, I went over a bunch of replacements. I do favor Rodgers, but I think he'll be outperformed by some of the more expensive options. So one of my two free transfers has been used already. I'm leaning towards kind of rolling the second transfer, but there is quite a bit of football happening tonight. I'm recording this on Wednesday evening. So if there is an injury to a specific player, I might be forced into the second transfer, but at the current moment, I'm hoping to roll it. Just to give you guys some detail about future plans, it seems quite popular at the moment to take Saka to Salah next game week, as Liverpool have two home fixtures. So of course, I need that 1.5 in the bank, plus a little bit of extra change, and then I can go for Salah in game week 4. Lots of wildcard talk at the current moment, so let's see how that plays out in game week 3, and how the template will shift for game week 4. But let me know your transfer plans in the comments down below, did you guys also go for an Nkunku replacement, or were you lucky enough not to select him in game week 1? And is there anyone out there bringing in Cole Palmer this game week? But now let's go over my team selection for the upcoming game week 3. As you guys can see, one free transfer and 1.5 in the bank. So the bench this week yet again kind of picks itself. Bentley, Winks, Howard, Bellis and Johnson. This will probably be our bench for most game weeks. As they're all my cheap options and my bench fodder. Now the fixtures aren't that great except for maybe a Johnson against Fulham at home. But here I'm expecting a Muniz Hattie. So let's hope that he gets that. So fingers crossed, none of my options need to come off the bench, as I can't see too many points coming from them. Now speaking about kind of expectations being low, Henderson between the sticks against Chelsea away, a team that's just scored 6 goals. So I don't really have many expectations at the moment for Henderson, one of the Crystal Palace centre-backs got injured last night, so who knows who's going to be in that back line. If Gay also departs the club before the transfer window, I might be playing centre-back for Crystal Palace this weekend. So let's just hope that Henderson maybe pulls off a safe masterclass, as that's the only way he's actually going to get points this game week. Now our back line is going to start off with Trent against United. This one's actually quite hard to call, but under slot, Liverpool have been pretty good defensively. And with Trent, there's always that threat of attacking returns. Not many expectations here, I do think this is a tougher game on paper. And this United-Liverpool game is always a little bit unpredictable. Then with Gabriel, Arsenal have the highest chance of a clean sheet in terms of the percentages, even though they're facing Brighton at home. So an improved attack, I would say, a pretty strong one this Premier League season. Let's see if Gabriel and Arsenal can hold the clean sheet. Then Pedro Porro, like Trent, quite a hard game to predict. I think this one's going to have a lot of goals in it. But we own Pedro Porro for the attacking returns, not the clean sheets. So let's see what happens in this one. I'm pretty comfortable starting him. Can't see too many clean sheets in game week 3. So let's just hope for the best. Now mid for department, Saka starting off pretty strong here. Brighton at home, I can see some goals for Arsenal. This should be quite an open one. I even think Saka's an outside Kamsi punt. So pretty confident in owning him. I probably wish he was Cole Palmer for this game week. But Saka's quite a consistent performer. I guess I could always do a switch if I wanted to with that money in the bank. But I'm pretty confident in Saka for game week 3. Another option that hopefully some confidence will equal FPL points is going to be Eze. And he has Chelsea away. Now I won't lie, I don't really rate that Chelsea defence at the moment. Even Wolves got 2 goals against them. And he's coming off hot after a pretty strong midweek fixture. So if you guys don't know, Eze scored and assisted in that game. I just wish it was a Premier League one. But I'm actually pretty confident about holding him. The stats look strong. I just hope the FPL points come pretty soon. As my patience might draw a little bit thin if he blanks once again. Then our new signing Rodgers is going to slot straight into the starting 11. Leicester away is a great game. And I'm pretty confident about the expected minutes. So let's see if he can kind of hit the ground running. Definitely a popular option for game week 3. And Aston Villa start this lovely run of 4 fixtures. Then our final midfielder, Diego Jota against United away. Fingers crossed Liverpool put in a strong attacking performance. At the moment they're the best attack in terms of XG non-penalty. And I'm pretty confident about Jota starting this one. But he'll probably be subbed a little bit early. It's performing pretty well as long as he can match Salah or get close to him. I'll be pretty happy at the end of the day. Now up front Erling Haaland will be taking the Kamsi armband once again. Fresh off for Hattie against Ipswich in game week 2. So can he make it back to back? Should we actually triple captain him for this game week? West Ham do look better from a defensive point of view compared to last season. I'm still expecting the Norwegian though to do well as well as Man City. And therefore I'm pretty comfortable captaining him. Then our last two strikers, hopefully Isaac against Spurs. As predicted, I think this will be quite an open game. Historically Newcastle have actually done pretty well against them. And therefore I'm fine keeping Isaac for one more week. The same with Munez against Ipswich away, I mean I'm not going to take him out before a newly promoted side, 
I just need him to actually score after blanking in the first two game weeks. So let's see what happens. Hopefully Ben Johnson doesn't put on a defensive masterclass as Muniz will hopefully get some attacking returns in this one. But overall, I don't think the team looks kind of sensational. The defense, especially at the moment, but I can't really see many clean sheets for most teams in game week three. And obviously I wish I'd call Palmer as he might even be the best camp option this game week. But let me know your transfer plans for this week as well as your kind of team selection debates that you're currently having. I'll try to help you guys out as far as possible. Comment them down below on my Discord server, link in the description. As mentioned, I am recording this on Wednesday night before those games do kick off. So fingers crossed there's no injury news coming from them. Otherwise, watch the press conferences coming up on Thursday and Friday to get the most informed news. And I'll update you guys on my team selection on the deadline stream coming up one hour before the deadline on Saturday. But this is basically going to wrap for the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. Deadline stream, as mentioned, so make sure those notifications are turned on. And hopefully I'll see you guys there. But for the time being, I'm Isaiah Orr. It's been Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.